Hello everyone and welcome again to Randomized Gaming and this will be the latest installment in our Indie First Impressions video series and as always I will be your host for this Indie First Impressions Random Gamer Ribbon. And in today's video we are going to be looking at the title Dimensions Drifter. And just before we begin this video I should declare that we were kindly provided a Steam key in order to look at Dimensions Drifter by the developers. However, while they supplied us with a free Steam key, we maintain full creative control of the video here at Randomized Gaming and our opinions are our own. Now, the first thing I should say is Dimensions Drifter is still only in early access at present. So, while traditionally I like to ideally look at full completed titles or release titles, I thought for a change we'd just look at this one just because it looked a bit interesting. But it is only in early access at the time of recording this video, which is on the 21st of January 2019. So you may find in a few months time the game is radically different to what you see now, in which case I highly recommend you look at a more recent video. So do keep that in mind when you're watching this video because you may find in a year's time the game is very very different and completely different and any criticisms I have in this video may be out of date and even some of the positives may have changed or the game may be very different. So what is Dimensions Drifter? Well it's a procedurally generated third person action shooter. It's developed by a company called Blue Eagle Productions and its publisher which is one of the staff members of Blue Eagle Productions I believe is Paul Schneider, I think I've pronounced his name correctly, apologies if I haven't, and he's actually a, a small time indie developer, he's actually released a couple of games, so if you haven't already heard of him as a developer, he's done a game called Super Panda's Adventure, he's done another game called Unloved, which actually has elements of it in this one, and he also has done Gun Girl 2, which is a sort of 2D platformer shooter. And that's actually a free to download one if you want to actually try one of his other games. So you can actually download that one for free. And this is their fourth title he's obviously working on, this Dimensions Drifter. So this isn't a first time developer. And it certainly shows at least from how stable the game is. Because from my perspective when playing it, I didn't have any crashes or anything. Which from early access I was quite relieved about. Because usually you get horror stories about some games just crashing left, right and centre, but from a uh, stability point it was very stable, played well, played fairly smoothly as well, so I, from that point I don't have any complaints or anything. So the aim of the game is really a loot shooter, you level up by killing various baddies, and you can also find various chests hidden throughout each stage which grant you additional weapons, power-ups, etc etc plenty of customization options you name it, you find it in chess now each stage seems to have one to two chess i am occasionally seeing on each stage saying it's having three some say they have two but quite often you'll find one chest and it will say there are two but you'll only find one and it'll say there are three but you only find two so that's a little bit odd so either there's really clever hidden mechanics for hiding some of the chests or it's not spawning the correct amount of chests but either way, from the chest you get various customization colours, and I've got a few colours for the handgun, and plenty of knickknacks, assortments, and mods for the various weapons to improve your aim, shooting skill, how quickly you fire, etc, etc. There's a whole range of customization. So it's very much a fast-paced shooter, to, and it's also very much reminds me of Doom. It's basically point-click shoot. So your objective basically is just do each stage. Aside from mowing down all the enemies that you can find, you just basically open the chests, collect power-ups, and then head for the exit. And the exit looks at the minute a bit like the Obelisk from 2001. In fact, initially when I saw it, I was a bit confused as to what the exit was, and I was like, oh, it's this thing. And once you finish the level, you can go back to the menus, adjust your loadout from the gear you picked up from the previous stage and then do another level. Once you basically level up the story progresses as well although the minute the story does appear to be only text in a like note form on the menu that as you level up basically during game experience more of that script or part of the story is unveiled. So it's, it's a very simple mechanic but it's a nice one. Now I've not seen too much of the story. Level ups do seem quite slow actually, you have to do a surprisingly large number of levels and at the minute it seems quite restrictive to how big the levels were. It's, it's, it's random, you basically get to pick like three levels each time you finish a level, but it's completely random as all the levels are procedurally generated. So some will be bigger than others, some will have more enemies, some will have more loot, and some will be easier and some will be harder. Currently in game I've only been able to pick up three weapons so far, 
you basically have a pistol for sort of standard damage and it's alt fire it has a sort of rebound shot you have a shotgun for a much stronger attack and of course it has limited range and you also have a close combat weapon for thing when things get a bit hectic and you want to deal with enemies directly in front of you the other thing is you are limited in ammo and the amount of ammo you have on one mission carries over on the next so if you go shooting crazy on one mission you will have no ammo on the next until you find some more well it has to be said close combat attacks are very very powerful and using close combat with range attacks can be very effective not only to save ammo but deal high amounts of damage to the enemy very quickly very effectively now the graphics themselves actually use a sort of cell shaded style look and there is for me i get a weird disco vibe from it everything's very colorful quite bright with the cell shaded vision and the, the blood sort of done in a sort of comical way the monsters are all very lively and colorful even though they're taken from another game the unloved enemies they're actually from unloved you get basically you get like a big fat sort of zombie one with the meat cleaver you get sort of zombie cowboy guy who shoots really quickly you get another one that throws fireballs and a variant on that one that basically they look a bit like a gingerbread man slash nurse throws fireballs but there's two variants of them throwing different fireballs so they're, they're quite colorful and that's quite nice in the graphical front the characters also the default characters also quite bright and colorful with her design admittedly not so keen on some of the aspects of her design her attributes don't look quite right her face she looks like she needs a bit of work looks a bit more she looks like she needs some designs look a bit more human her face looks a bit wide you have the bouncing breasts as well which are novel for about five minutes but you kind of feel like maybe you could just have some more adjustments in terms of the character physique so you can adjust her how you want there's supposedly going to be a male character as well but currently at the minute he's his model is not available and there's also supposed to be more customization characters but again they're not available at present as with the enemies, the unloved enemies are supposedly only really the sort of starting wave of the game. There's supposed to be about 15 or 16 enemies related to the look of the game, but at present they're still being worked on. Now for the music, we have some very much rock and roll, high adrenaline tunes, which you expect from this type of game, very much reminiscent of Doom. I can only assume these tracks are going to be in the final game. They may be placeholder as this again, this is early access. What you hear so far is actually very good, although there's only a couple of tunes, they do suit the game very well. All in all, I think Dimension Drifter is looking to be showing a lot of promise as a fast paced third person action shooter. However, it has a long, long way to go before it's finished based on this pre-alpha build. I mean, it's complete and it doesn't crash and you can carry on leveling up and getting unlocked and stuff but I did find after about an hour or two I felt I'd seen everything I needed to see and I did feel that this game has a lot of work going forward that needs to be done on it. That does leave me with a bit of conflicted opinion on it because I can't really say anything hugely negative because from what I played it seems solid. Certainly I mean it's very stable. The one gripe I had about the performance was some of the options when set to high graphical settings I noticed really slowed down the performance so I wasn't even get I wasn't not getting a constant 60 or even a 30 at point and I'm on a 32 gigs Windows 7 i7 core processor using a 2 gig of its graphics card as an ATI one I would have felt this should have been at that should have been able to do 60 frames a second on some of the reduced settings very very easily certainly with it with taking out the bloom but some of them don't appear to be in the setting wise optimized particularly well so at the minute it doesn't run as well as it should do admittedly you expect that at this early stage the developers will hopefully optimize their code later on but the caveat being that is one issue i did encounter the level design while procedurally generated does come across very similar with each procedural generation admittedly warframe which we've been playing a lot recently is very guilty of that too but these procedurally generated stages at this stage because there's still a lot of content that isn't implemented in game and you can't do anything with certainly at present you can pick up casino coins that I couldn't seem to find anything to do with and there are lots of other bits like that that still clearly have a lot of work and implementation ahead before the game is finished. Now I'm all for supporting independent development but I think at the minute my personal opinion is the price is a touch high on this one for the early access at this stage. Do bear in mind paying for anything on early access is a risk because the developer may not finish the title in question. In this case I do quite like Dimensions Drifters from what I played of it. it. It does show a lot of promise so for me I would actually say if you like this pick up and you want to support the developer but perhaps you don't want to take a punt on the early access stuff then I'd look at 
There are other couple of games, there's three of them, and one's three, but two of them are paid for ones, and they're not that expensive. And they've actually got quite high Steam rates the other two. So I would actually advise looking at them and perhaps picking up one of them to support the developer instead, if you like the look of this but don't necessarily want to buy Dimensions Drifter at this point. Certainly I would take a look at it again in six months. There's a lot of promise here, but until I see more content, I can't really say much more. I mean, certainly if you, if you do want, if you like the look of this game, then of course means pick up an early access. That said, I suspect a lot of you are aware of what you're getting in for when you pick up an early access title. But yeah, certainly I think six months down the road, this definitely might be one to look again at to see how it's progressed. So what I do just before ending this video is I will pop up some links into the card section of our YouTube video for this one, and I will link to the debt trailers on YouTube of the developers other games if you want to have a gander at them and if you want to look about picking them up. And on top of that I will be including a link to Dimensions Drifter Steam page in the video description as well as links to the developers home page as well. And with that it's time for me to bid you adieu. As always I have been your host for this indie first impressions video Random Gamer Riven and all that's left for me to say is if you liked our content please do hit that like button and as always if you enjoyed this video and enjoy our channel's content as well please hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen and it's goodbye from me for this video.